guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Theurgy, which is by the Ministry of Meeples. It plays two to six players, it takes about 30 minutes per player, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Theurgy, you're attempting to gather followers for your religion. You'll be playing as alkalites, moving across the land, and building temples and locations while spreading the word of the one true religion, your religion. Now there will be other players with their own false doctrines, attempting to spread the word of their religion while attempting to build their own temples, but you, with miracles in hand, will sabotage them. Additionally, you can purchase or recruit monsters to your aid to defeat other people's monsters or to gain a foothold in certain locations. If you can control certain parts of the board based on your mission objective, you'll win the game. However, if your opponents manage to stop you and complete their objective, they win the game. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what the game comes with and how to set it up, and then we'll discuss how to play the game as well as what I think about it. So here is the game Theurgy and it is set up for two players. So let's go ahead and get into all of the different components of the game and then I'll explain the setup. Firstly, monsters. You're going to be getting a stack of monsters here and they're all going to have their own unique cards, their own unique abilities and how you place them. Additionally, each, mo each monster is going to have a corresponding token that will be associated with that monster. Go ahead and set the tokens next to the monster deck. There are player boards in the game and each player board is going to have the four different abilities of the specific player along with this little token here that will let you place it down onto these areas, which will then let you activate a specific ability. Each specific deity is going to have its own unique ability, and they're all going to be different. There is a range of easier to understand abilities to more complex abilities. Then over here, you're going to have the Miracle deck. Each player is going to get three of these cards, and you're going to shuffle it up and you're going to set it up based on how the book says, because there are capital events that will take place throughout the game based on how the setup is, based on the number of players, and these can be positive or negative effects. These are objective cards. Objective cards are a card you'll start out with, which will help you win the game, depending on how you place temples down. You're going to have these, which are basically skeptical tokens, and you'll be placing those on the board. They are kind of the neutral way of stopping you from growing your faith quickly. You'll have these tokens here, which represent uh, when monsters are not chosen on the board. And at a certain point, if you have too many of these on a monster, they will get removed and a new one will come out. These are people who do not have any faith, and they're represented by brown cubes. Whereas you as a player are going to have temples, you're going to have faith tokens or markers, and then you're going to have your own uh, cultists. You also have these guys here, which are your acolytes. They are your main characters in the game, attempting to spread the word, create divine intervention, and play miracles out. There are additional tokens and pieces and whatnot for the six-player variants of the game that you can play up to uh, all the different colors there. And otherwise, that's pretty much everything you get in the game other than the rule book, of course, and the box. So the setup. Take this deck and shuffle it, place three out, just as you see here. Make sure the tokens are next to it. Set aside these skeptic tokens, as well as these, these little brown cubes here, or these gray cubes here. Go ahead and give everybody their player color, and then go ahead and give them all their cubes and their temples and their faith markers, as well as their little token here that represents movement and, and actions. Additionally, when players choose a character, the person who chose first is the person who goes last. So basically, it'll be the opposite of turn order based on the, uh, the, the choices you make as to who gets to take what first. Deal out three miracle cards to each player, and then go ahead and give them a player reference card. And that's pretty much it for the setup for the players. Additionally, here for the board setup, it's pretty simple. Place the capital in the middle, place a different type of location adjacent to the middle, and then randomly select tiles and place them on the outskirts. If you ever run into a problem, which this would be a problem here, if three of the areas are adjacent to each other and are the same symbol, then refer to the book and it will tell you how to change the specific piece on the inside. Go ahead and place the non-believers, eight of them in the middle, along with this anomaly token. Take these two skeptic markers and place them in the middle on the capital. And then do the same here, but use five of these brown, these gray cubes and one of these skeptical tokens in all the areas. And then in each area that doesn't have a character or player, set three of these cubes down in each of these areas here. When you're playing two players, you'll simply select a side of the board, one of these areas here, and place three of your cultists and your acolyte, and then do the same thing on the corresponding opposite end of the board. Red did the same thing over here as well, three and one, and then over here is three and one. When you're playing a three-player game, then, of course, the next player would just take this spot and this space. And if you're playing any more number of players, you can choose any of the spaces. And that's pretty much it for the setup for the game Theogy, as well as all the components you 
you get in the game. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll just show you how to play, what the different actions are, how the monsters function, and then we'll come up and discuss my review of the game. So I went ahead and removed all of the three and up player cards, tokens, and things that you would use in that case. And then I went ahead and gave every single player, the two players here, an objective card based on the number of player count. And these objectives will basically tell you what you need to do in order to achieve your second victory condition, which will be located on the player area in the middle, on the seven. Temples meeting your objective. You need to have seven with the meeting of the objective, as opposed to you having, having one in the capital and then five anywhere else and the final one is just having eight anywhere on the board so these are secret and you should not reveal them at all until you win the game once you win the game with this then you can go ahead and reveal it additionally each of these players are gonna do something different uh we're gonna have to set these markers off to the side this player like i said before ha can basically he can basically take the pilgrimage action and move his cubes and alkalites or his uh his cultist and his alkalites more than once, which is nice, twice. And this one over here, whenever he converts somebody, he can convert two instead of one. But everything else is pretty much set up as explained. I went ahead and put tokens on the monsters here so that you can see that when you pick up one of these guys or recruit them, you'll place them down in the space that you recruit them based on where your acolyte is. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the actions. And I'll just go ahead and take this player board here. So these are the four actions in the game. And what's also nice too is on this card here, it will explain how your actions work. So we'll start with blue here. Blue is going to take the pilgrimage action, and that says you will move cubes and acolytes, and then once per turn, each acolyte may preach and convert one cube or fight, remove one monster. So the way that works is pretty simple. This guy, he can go ahead, and he's only to move two, twice with his ability. So he'll go one and two, and he can move on his he can move his guys twice as opposed to once, and then he can actually convert one of these guys into one of his own. So he's spreading the word of his religion. And then this guy over here, he'll move one and two, and he will do the same as well. And that's basically how the pilgrimage action will work. The only other thing is, if there was a monster there, per se, and he didn't want to convert, he could instead... Oops, I gotta put one of these guys here. He could instead remove this monster from the game. So he, they're able to remove monsters with that pilgrimage action. Another action is called spreading the word. And spreading the word basically says that when you, you will place a faith token where you have a cube present. Or you can replace an opposing faith token if you have more cubes in the surrounding areas than the opposing player. Now, if this player wanted to test, the, if, he, if this player wanted to spread the word, he would simply take this. He would check to see if he has more faith in the surrounding area, and he doesn't, so he can't place one here. So instead, he'll have to take something else. And so he's going to go ahead and move one space with his pilgrimage action. And then he's going to go ahead and preach twice, which is really nice, because that means he gets rid of two of these guys here. And then he converts two of them into his own two. So he's got one more than this guy. And the same will be said for this guy over here. He'll move over here. He'll convert these two just like this. And now he's got two more. Another thing to note too is once you take an action, you cannot take the same action twice in a row. So now that it is Blue's turn, he cannot pilgrimage again. He's going to have to take one of these three other abilities. And we'll just go ahead and go on to, uh, let's say, Divine Intervention. Divine Intervention states that uh, you can activate abilities of monsters, and then you can either choose to play a card from your hand, which is a miracle, or you can pick up one of these monsters. Now, you can only place a monster if that monster has a corresponding type with an associated uh, character, uh, a cultist, or uh, one of these guys here on a specific area. So this says it's got a little piece of... Uh, Barley or whatever, and so you can pick up the Manticore if he or she wanted to, and he or she will. So they'll go ahead and take this card here, place it next to them, put this cube here, and whenever a monster gets chosen in a space like this, you're going to remove all the skepticism from that area, and then you're going to place markers on all the monsters that were not chosen and put out a new one. This monster is also able to activate and do its unique abilities. This one here says remove one cube from a hex of your choice, and he's going to do that. He'll go ahead and remove this gray cube from that area there. And then after that, he's done. Now, if he didn't want to do that action and he wanted to play a miracle, he can go and play one of these cards here, which one of them says select two of the pending monsters to summon immediately. Wow, so he can choose two of them to summon immediately. That's really, really nice. Or something like this. Move your occult and any number of cubes of any color from this hex to a fishing village of your choice, which are these spaces here. 
So he'll be able to move these guys to different locations, utilizing these miracle cards. And if you chose that miracle action, you can discard any number of other miracles from your hand, and then you'll draw up to three. So you can get different miracle actions when you choose to do Divine Intervention. Next turn, let's go ahead and show you how this spread the word works. So we'll go ahead and place this guy here, and then he is going to go ahead and take one of his tokens, and he can place it on any of these areas here, provided he has more cubes than any of the other players in the surrounding areas. So he's got five here, and this player's got four, so he can go ahead and place that marker right there. Spreading the word helps because when you choose to do stuff like test the faith and place temples down, you are then going to calculate how many guys you have, based on how much you've spread the word in the corresponding areas. A very, very useful tactic indeed. The final thing is test the faith. And test the faith works fairly simply. You're going to go ahead and, so we'll go ahead and do it with this one here. It says, so it says, move the anomaly token to the hex associated with the specific cultist you choose. So we'll go ahead and choose that one there. And then it says, convert cubes according to the difference between the number of faith tokens present. And in this case, there's one faith token. You'll look at all of them surrounding, and then you'll convert. And you'll start with the highest amount. So if red had two and blue had one, red would go first. And then you'll convert. And in this case, he or she has more than gray and blue. So both of these are going to go, and they'll be converted to red. After all of the to faith tokens have been checked, then you're going to see whoever has the most cubes in that specific area. And whoever does is going to get a temple. That is how you're basically going to win the game because you need a certain amount in order to win. Additionally, if there was a tie, no one would win. And if there was a temple there previously and there was a tie, that temple will collapse. If at any point Gray ever wins, the temple will collapse as well. Collapsed temples are temples. But they don't count towards victory conditions. They count as half temples. And those are the basic actions in the game. The only other thing to note is when you create a temple after testing the faith, you're going to take skepticism markers and place them on the corresponding areas around the board, provided that they don't have any monsters or acolytes in those specific areas. Uh, I think I pretty much covered most everything. There's a lot of different cards here for the Miracle deck, which will do different things. And whenever you run into capital events, you'll just simply act them out or do whatever they say and draw a new one. New monsters will come out and all of them will use different abilities. And whenever you choose to use Divine Intervention, you'll always get to activate all monsters you have on the field. And they function just like uh, cultists or acolytes. They'll move around the board and perform certain actions, but they can be killed by the pilgrimage action. At some point or another, a player is going to achieve victory by, like I said before, having six temples, including one in the middle, or seven temples meeting their specific objective, or finally just having eight temples anywhere on the board. The last thing I really want to talk about is a specific type of test the faith action. So if I wanted to, let's go ahead and say I had these three guys here, and then I had, oh, I don't know. We'll go ahead and take these guys. We'll have four purple, so we're playing a three-player game now, one red, two of these, and two of these, and one of these. So we've got two faith of red, and we have one of blue, and then we've got three blue uh, characters, this little acolyte here, and then we've got five purple, and we've got one red. First thing that's going to happen is the highest numbers will trigger, which is going to be the neutral, and it's going to be red. Red will take equal numbers with blue, or with, with gray, um, if they can. So in this case, they both take two from purple. So purple is going to lose four total. And then red is going to put two down. And gray will put two down as well. Then they're going to go ahead and check blue. And blue has three. So red and uh, gray will take two off of blue. And they'll each place one down. And they will also check purple. In this case, they can't take one away from purple. And then blue will check, and the only person here that has less faith or test of faith markers than blue is purple. So purple will get removed, and another blue will come out. Then you'll see whoever has the most cubes here, in which case red does, and red will place down their temple. Now, anybody can take that action, and you're not guaranteed to get a temple by taking the action. So you have to make sure that you calculate correctly when choosing to take the test the faith action, because this will help your opponents out if you don't calculate correctly. Regardless, so that's the basic idea how to play the game. There's a lot of little nuanced things you can do and strategies. We'll come up and discuss that now in my review. Discussion time for the game. But just before that, one small caveat. When you're spreading the word, you can place your token down regardless of how many uh, cubes you have on the board or in surrounding areas. The only time that actually really matters is when you're taking an opponent's away and placing yours down there instead. Otherwise, that's it though. This game, 
is an area control game that has a lot of tactics built into it. There's only four actions you take. You're going to take the pilgrimage action, which is probably your most famous action because you're going to be moving around converting people. Then you'll be able to take the spread the word action, which is extremely powerful and don't discount it because you'll be placing those tokens down and whenever test the faith happens, those little tokens will count intuitively to converting other players' units around. Then you can have Divine Intervention, which is basically monsters and miracles. They're the anomaly in the game. It's You can take the monsters and use them as actions, but be prepared for people to destroy them, or use miracles that can be very powerful at certain instances, but it's also a good way to get rid of miracle cards in your hand to get new ones. And then the final one, which is Test the Faith, which is what you need to do in order to win the game, but you have to make sure you use them on certain areas, because if you don't, you're going to not get the temple, even though you chose the action. So you have to be pretty well aware of that. Another thing to note too is the objective card. Everybody's gonna have one. It's gonna have the same requirements as to the six temple rule, but with a unique caveat. Like this one here says all your temples and ruins must be built in farm town or market towns, mining mines, and fishing villages, which is different compared to the other players, which states three of your temples must be on a settlement containing at least one opposing ruin. So there's gonna be different requirements for the number of, of for the what the number of temples is going to be, but not how many temples. Um, the artwork in the game is excellent. I really, really like the artwork in the game. I think all the monster artwork is really well done and unique. It's something I haven't seen a lot as for the monsters in an area control game. There's been a couple of them, but I think this one does a very good job of that. It explains everything on the card fairly simply, where you can place them, their movement as well, like some don't move because they have a little X on them, whereas others can move anywhere because it has a little gold marker, and then others can just simply move one space because they have a simple just movement area. And then of course, how they act. Some of them are going to be instant actions and others are going to be passive actions based on how they move and where they go. And there's quite a lot of monsters. You're not actually going to play with most of the monsters throughout the game, especially in a two or three player game. You'll be more focused on the area control aspects, but when monster abilities do trigger, they're going to be very useful and players are going to go after them. The same can be said for miracle abilities as well. Let's read a couple of those off. Remove two cubes from each of three adjacent hexes. Very good. Disorderly Realms. Swap each faith token on this hex with a faith token from somewhere else on the board. That's actually pretty good as well. And then place and oppose the Acolyte on an, any hex on its side. So you can actually make Acolytes fall on their side. And it has behaves in certain ways with temples, but you can bring them back up as well. Uh, artwork solid, the component quality, everything. This is all a prototype, so I'm expecting the component quality to increase to some extent, but for what is here, it's a really nice game crafter quality um, board game, and as you can see down below, I thought they did a very good job with what, they, with what they're going for right now, and I'm interested to see what they do with uh, the game itself, whether they be using cubes and meeples or miniatures. I'm not actually too sure, but you can go ahead and check out the campaign for yourself and find out. The theme of the game works well. You are basically trying to spread the word, and by building temples and placing these uh, auras around to try and convert people, it does have that feel of like this player is definitely converting too fast, they're spreading the word too well, they're playing the right miracles. We as the smaller cults need to kind of team up against that person for a bit, but everybody's kind of looking out for just themselves as opposed to specifically working with people. It's always kind of a very soft truce in the game. Uh, one one or two things I can say about it is there's player abilities on the boards here. I, I find some to be pow more powerful than others, but it might just be because, as they say in the rules, some are easier to use and understand than others, and based on I didn't play, I haven't played this game more than four or five times, uh, that might be a reason as to why I think others are better. Like the movement twice is good, but this pilgrim action that you can, you can basically uh, preach twice is very, very good, and you want to have uh, as many of those little cubes on the board as, as you possibly can. Some of these cards are obviously better than others, depending on the situation, but at the same time you have to go through the deck and choose when to use them and how you want to use them as well. Uh, Overall, it's a solid little game. I think if you like a more nuanced area control game with a lot of different choices, even though there's only four actions, I think you're going to enjoy this game. Uh, there's not a lot as far as I would say, I guess, maybe a three or four player game. Uh, up three to five player, or three to six player, it's going to be better played than just a two player game because a two player, it's more of a back and forth. But when you add more players to a game like this, there's going to be a more politics in it. There's going to be a more social aspect to the game, as well as you can do some threats and, and uh, truces and all that kind of stuff, which just brings a little more fun and engagement to this specific type of game. If I were to play this game, I would choose to play it at 
four four players, maybe five players, because at six it gets a little lengthy. Overall, I had a good time with this game, and I think if you're interested in taking a look at an area control game, this one would not be a bad choice to look at. Go ahead and take a look at the game down below in the link in the description if you're interested in picking up VOG. All right, I hope I said that name right. Outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos. Here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. We really do greatly appreciate it, right down from the deepest of our hearts. Oh, uh, one last little thing with the game, too. I wanted to say that when you test the faith, I almost forgot, but it's important. When you test the faith, you, it's going to be a little complex. You have to realize how everything works. And for newer players, it's going to take at least one full game to really grasp how everything functions in this game. So be prepared for your first game to be, I wouldn't say rocky, but definitely things that you're not going to be prepared for or completely understand with how the tokens remove and whatnot. Uh, but after the first game, I was easily able to comprehend how everything functioned and it worked out just fine. But just to let you guys know, for those who are newer gamers, this one's a little more medium to heavy side. All right, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We're giving away a game on from some Simon called Marvel United or something like that. You can check the site and see what it's there. Also, our live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can win games and play games. Watch us play games just like this one down below. You can vote on the winners and all that kind of stuff. We have a little community going on. It's fun. We'd like to have you there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, we look forward to converting you next time.